let's start uh, with the session of Umul Kitab Al-Fatiha. Okay, so this uh, today's class is about a presentation by eight uh, person. So you have Alif Mukri, Khalis, Iwana, Nabilah, Cik Wan Huda, Ainul Najmi, and Alif Shami. So we start with this part first. So with the Alif first, called, uh, followed by Khalis, Iwana, and so on. So while you presenting on the side here, I will uh, put what we call uh, your slide. For example, the slide for Alif is this. So I put the slide here. So while Alif uh, say something, I will maybe jot down something lah. And also because we want to make sure the time is observed because you have eight uh, person and if one person use like more than five minutes, then it will be prolonged this session. So that's uh, I will make the what we call. Let me put the stopwatch first. So let me how to do it. Uh, let me add the timer first here. So you see the timer there. Okay. So you see the timer there and then maybe I put myself. Here it's okay because uh, it, the most important thing is you, huh? so me is okay because I need to write something uh, somewhere here, so at least I can have space to write. So you on the right, so your presentation on the left. So without further ado, let's start with Alif Mukri. So Alif, the floor is yours. Oh, okay. Let me start the timer first, yeah. One, two. You can uh, present, but as long as you don't exceed the five minutes, eh? because if not, uh, it will prolong the thing. But try yeah. to present at least like uh, two minutes, three minutes, and above like that. Lah. Okay. Okay, let's start. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Muhammad Alif Mukri, and I chose metal as the topic of my presentation today. But specifically, as you guys can see, I will talk about steel. So, um, what is steel? What about steel? is uh, one of the strongest metal in the world. Uh, it has a very wide range of usage, very mass produced, and uh, uh, the ability to multitask. When I, when I say multitask, I mean uh, human produce uh, many different kind of uh, type of steels with many different purposes like machine utensils so before I go further down to explain uh, about the the physical properties the chemical properties I will briefly introduce you guys what is steel so steel is not in the periodic table but it is a combination or a mixture or of two or more metal elements uh, it is alloy enriched iron with around one to five percent carbon uh, it is a very heavy, dense, and prone to corrosion type of metal. Uh, and some of the physical properties that we can think of is hard ductility, hard ductile. So ductility is the degree to which a material can retain its state at room temperature, which means that it is very hard to break it, very hard to uh, do damage, and also malleable solid. Malleable is calenturan. So unlike gold or silver, steel is very hard to shape it due to its malleable solid. Which means that I would say steel has a very, very high melting point. And also one of the strongest type of metal in the world. So with this chemical and physical properties, people manufacture different kinds of steel with different kinds of purposes. So next slide. So. All right. So uh, the first uh, types of steel that is very much uh, we know people know uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel is uh, highly resistant to corrosion and rust, and usually produce utensils, spoon, fork, and pen. This is uh, the most mass-produced type of steel, as. As you can see in the picture, we use spoon every day, we use fork, knife, uh, even accessories like um, uh, watch, uh, even in your bedroom like desk lamp, yeah, in your bathroom like your doorknob, even cars, motorcycle, any vehicle have stainless steel. So, uh, 
yeah, it is very much mass produced. Uh, we use it every day because we don't. Because let's say uh, we eat our food with our spoon and fork being rusty. This very we don't want to infect uh, our body with rusty material to get our food. So this is why uh, this type of steel is very much mass produced through the whole world. So uh, the next one is tool steel. Personal, this is my this is my favorite kinds of steel. Uh, this is like the the hardest type of steel. Hardest. There are many types of steel, but this is the hardest one. So it is uh, commonly used for manufacturing of drilling, cutting, and shock resistance tools. Uh, it is. It has a wide variety of applications into construction, shipbuilding, and automotive building. So as you can see in the picture, uh, we we see screws, machines, and a factory. And playa uh, steel. So this is the hardest type of steel. Why? Because it is alloyed with a bunch of other elements like cobalt, tungsten, and vanadium. Um, uh, this is uh, this is used commonly in workshop, uh, used for construction industry to build buildings and other stuff. So uh, talking about buildings, next slide. Uh, we can see that uh, we can uh, we can see that architecture by steel is a very common thing. So steel provides architects the flexibility to express a building's frame help facilitate the artistic expression the client desires so uh if you if you look at the picture we see eiffel tower apple petronas twin tower uh, even modern architectures is very commonly used for uh building okay you can continue just uh, don't don't go much longer lah. okay uh in fact, most modern buildings nowadays are made of steel, but I wouldn't say 100% made of steel, but majority proportion of material that are consumed to construct a building are steel. So uh, with this information given, therefore we can agree that uh, steel are very much mass produced. Again, uh, it is widely consumed by many industry, not just uh, automotive industry, even film industry, cooking industry, any other industry consume steel. So uh, in conclusion, I would say that steel is a very remarkable material. So the reason is number one, it is super convenient to human to produce variety types of steel. Again, uh, they produce many kinds of steel for many, many different purposes. So it is very convenient to help human to build things. Uh, number two, the most important thing, one of the most eco-friendly material, uh, it still is endlessly recyclable. Uh, it, um, it doesn't have, people don't have to produce new steel from scratch. They just use scrap to produce new steel. Uh, so I would say that it is relatively uh, need little energy to produce it. Yeah. That's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Alif Mukri. Uh, so please stay on the what call on the Zoom, meaning that your camera is still on until all the presenter for the first four presenter is done. So the second is basically Khalis. Okay, Khalis, let me take your part first. Okay, so Khalis will talk about the polymer. So let me, uh, Khalis, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, let's start. Okay. Has the timer started? Okay. Okay, I'll start welcome everyone. So my topic for today is polymer, or specifically I will talk about polyester. As you see on the screen, uh, that's a jersey. And as we know, jerseys are made from polyester. What you should know about polyester is that it's petroleum based, so it's non-sustainable and non-biodegradable. So what makes the jersey different? Okay, a little backstory is that this jersey was given as a gift. And once I put it on, I felt like it's a bit weird. Like it's not the ones you get at the store. So once I checked the website, it's revealed that this jersey is actually recycled polyester. Okay, so this jersey was probably something from an old jersey or 
something that didn't make the quality check or probably probably excess material from making an jersey. So from that point, I wondered, like, is there any other sports-oriented products that they made that's similar in sustainability, like from this big sports or athletic products company? So, sir, would you move to the next slide? Okay, next slide. <clears throat> Luckily, I didn't have to go far. Uh, this is also a Nike product. I know some, I think some most of you know what this is. This is a Nike Air Max, but I'm not going to talk about the shoe. I'm going to talk about the cushioning uh, it has. You see the clear, the clear, uh, I, the clear part of it? That's called a Nike Air Max, Nike Air Unit. Okay, so, uh, sir, can you move to the next slide? So I will talk very briefly how a Nike Air Unit is made of, uh, is, is made. This one is pulled from the official Nike website, so there would be no misinformation. So the blue film that you see is called thermoplastic polyurethane. Okay, so they heat it to a certain temperature, then the mold clamp them down together. Once they have the shape, they cut it out and fill it with nitrogen, nitrogen gas and then they pass it to Colicheck before they send it to a factory to be assembled to a whole shoe. Okay, so that's it about how they made the Nike Air Unit. I'm not going to highlight that one. The one I want to elaborate on is the next slide. So, uh, sir, would you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the trimmings, the excess parts, I mean the excess materials, they don't go to waste. They are not left on a landfill somewhere. They recycle it. To make and to make the process all over again. So what I guess I'm trying to highlight here is that you know these products that we use on daily for our sports or our uh, our daily usage to just go to the market or something we can reuse them, even though they might seem unreusable since they are petroleum-based products or polyurethane. So. Uh, going back to the jersey again, you know, I've used this jersey in extreme heat, in heavy rain. It has been pulled by people, uh, it has been dragged through the mud by myself. And yet, it still stands, you know, something that sh was probably from another product, something that should have, shouldn't have been uh, a product itself. You know, and going into this class i think most of us ask ourselves how we can use the material to make a product but we should also ask ourselves how we can reuse the material to make a product again and you know we don't have to have a billion dollar company like nike we can do it by ourselves we can i don't know uh, go check your closet for an old jersey or something and if you don't use it anymore but you can grow it, you can start small, and maybe I know some someday when you guys are chemical or materials engineer, you can make your own products that is sustainable, eco friendly, and reuse highly reusable, and yet still remains functional. So I guess that's it for me. Uh, thank you for listening to my free advertisement for Nike. <laughs> I guess that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Khalis. So, without further ado, let's uh, continue with uh, with Iwana. I will this uh, the question and answer will be done after all of you uh, presented because I want to reserve the time the time. So now uh, we will go to Iwana. So Iwana will talk about ceramic. So this is Iwana's slide. So Iwana, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's start the clock. Wait, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Safe. Okay. okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. So, this is a mind map that I created about ceramics. So, I've numbered it 1, 2, 3, 4 so we can navigate through the numbers. So, firstly, on the first uh, tab, uh, tab it shows context so you can see there's a picture of a uh, clay pot and laksa how does this came together so firstly when i was first introduced with ceramics 
it was through my great grandmother. She used to make a uh, kuah laksa in that very pot, that ceramic pot. She told me the reason why she used that ceramic pot instead of a normal steel pot is because clay pot uh, is created through pottery and pottery has a kind of memory of the food it held. And only a clay pot can keep the memory of the love the cook put into preparing the dish. Uh, why is this so? Uh, from my research on Google, uh, ceramics are generally made by taking mixtures of clay, earthen elements, powders and water and shaping them into desired forms. Once the ceramic has been shaped, it is then fired in a high temperature over a temperature oven known as kiln. Often, ceramics are covered in decorative, waterproof, paint-like substance called glaze. So, uh, based on what my grandmother told me, I kind of googled some more to know like why people use clay pot to make certain type of dishes. This is because clay pots are not really that practical compared to the normal steel pots. Although uh, clay pots have a lot of advantages in terms of food compared to uh, compared to your normal steel pots. This is because this is because clay pots are wait a minute clay pots are porous and allow the heat and moisture to circulate evenly during the cooking process this lets the food retain more nutritive value in the food prepared in uh, compared to food prepared in other utensils also meat prepared in clay pots remain juicy and tender furthermore when you're using clay pots to cook you don't use excessive oil this is because uh, when you use clay pots, it is best not to use very, uh, too much oil. These pots take longer to heat and use a slower cooking pro process, helping to retain the natural moisture and natural oil present in the food itself. So, even though there are plenty of advantages of using ceramics in form of clay pots, there are obviously disadvantages. In the second tab, in the second step, it is shown the oh, yeah. the characteristic oh, of the, uh, the characteristic uh, of uh, uh, wait, wait. Uh, so the rest uh, if you open the mic please uh, close eh? if you uh, by mistake you open the mic uh, <coughs> expect, uh, except for Iwana please uh, close uh. okay uh, okay uh, in the second tab it is shown the natural characteristic of ceramics which are hard high melting point great insulators bri uh, brittle chemically inert and low elasticity chemically inert is actually one of the best thing about ceramics because ceramics are Pro, less prone to corrosion uh, compared to steel and steel and other materials. Also, ceramics are composed of clay. Clay is formed through ionic bond and covalent covalent bond. This helps the material to be to have the ability to shift with wet because when clay is wet, it can be formed, but then when it's fired, it becomes stone hard. And last but not least, there are all other application to to using ceramics instead of just using clay pots that have been babbling all this while. You can also use the ceramics in spark plug, fiber optics, uh, biomedical implants, coating of jet turbine, body armor, uh, coat, oh, and also you can coat your car with ceramic. This gives your car candy-like coating, helping it to have a forever shine. So yeah, this is all I learned about ceramics. I'm not sure if it's all correct. Okay, thank, thank you, Iwana, <coughs> for a nice presentation. So, um, next we will go to uh, Sister Nabila Husna, who will talk about the composite. So, let's open the slide for the Sister Nabila. So, Sister Nabila, are you ready? 
Yes. Okay, let me reset the timer and you can start now. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. I be uh, uh, Dr. Wan and hello friends. So today I am going to uh, present about composites. Okay, wait. I can't see. Okay, composite is when um, composite is made when two or more uh, different materials are put together to make a product with uh, an improved properties. And uh, these composites are consist of two things, which uh, are matrix and reinforcement. Matrix is materials that bind the reinforcement together, while the reinforcement is the material that makes up the bulk of the composite materials. One simple example of composite uh, is um, concrete. Concrete is made up of cement, sand, water, and gravel. When the four of these different materials are mixed together, uh, it will form concrete which are very very strong and hard. Um, we can know that concrete is used to build bridges, buildings, highway, and dams. Okay, next I am going to explain about one amazing things that uses composites to operate, which is maglev trains. Some of you may or have not about uh, this maglev trains. Maglev trains is a train that uses two sets of magnets to operate. The first set of magnet uh, is used to repel and push the train up off the tracks. And the second set of magnets is used to move the elevated train ahead. Okay, these maglev trains use superconductor composites to levitate the train above the magnetic rails. What is superconductor? Superconductor is a substance that conducts electricity when it becomes conduct electricity without resistance when it becomes colder than a critical temperature. At this cold temperature, electrons can move freely through the materials. As I said just now, that composite is uh, made up of two or three, uh, two or more different materials. So does these superconductors. Superconductors are made of niobium and germanium. Um, uh, this train uh, is um, actually like floating above the magnetic rails. Uh, it makes that this maglev train can operate without friction uh, or less friction, making it can move very, very fast. Um, however, uh, nowadays, it only... There are only three countries that operate this maglev train, which are in China, South Korea, and Japan. Well, that is all from me. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, uh, Nabila Husna. So now uh, we are going to the another four uh, set of uh, student, which is Cheikh Wan Huda, Ainul Najmi, and Alif Shami. So for this four person, uh, please open the camera and then for Alif, Khalis, Iwana and Nabila, you can, um, yeah, you can still on the camera, but I will not pin you lah. So remove pin, remove pin. So uh, the rest. Sure, uh, I think. So. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I mute myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So thank you for all this, what we call for Alif Mukri, Khalis, Iwana and Nabila. So uh, now we will move to the second set of students, which is Cik Wan Huda, Ainul, Najmi and Alif Mukri. So for uh, Khalis, Nabila, so I already removed the pin. So basically, uh, it's up to you whether you uh, want to on the camera or not. But I already removed the pin from you, so people will not see you later on, lah. So I already uh, removed. Okay, so for this four, Cheikh Wan Huda, Ainul, and Najmi, can you open the camera because I want to pin you now.
So let me pin you first, add pin, and then uh, Alif Shami. <coughs> so Alif Shami, let me pin you, add pin, and then let's go to check one Huda. Where are you? Okay, so here, so let me pin you first, add pin, and I know, let me pin you. Okay, so let's go this way and as usual I put here and then I will make sure I inside this timer So we will start with what with uh, Cik Wan Huda who will discuss about metal. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, so one two three four. So let me go to this uh, presentation first Okay, so if you are ready, I will start the timer now uh, okay, uh, Bismillah and Assalamualaikum. Today I am going to talk about the topic of metal. <coughs> the reason why I choose this tumbler because it has its own story. Uh, this is my own stainless steel tumbler that I have been used during in CFS. And if I am not mistaken, uh, in CFS there is no water purifier like Kupu and Kowei. And I am a person uh, who loves to drink uh, warm water in the morning but at the same time I'm so lazy to cook water because uh, I feel it's so leachy. Sebabnya uh, I need to wait until the weight start. I need to wait until the water start boil then I still need to wait until uh, the temperature of water change from hot uh, to warm. So for me it's really troublesome. So what I did, uh, usually every night I will use the metal to boil water and I will keep in this tumbler because uh, I want to make sure that it can stay warm for a longer period like 7 until 8 hours so when I wake up uh, in the morning I still can get uh, my my warm water to drink because of that I felt that uh, this tumbler is really helpful uh, for me during my study in CFS uh, as what you can see from this photo, uh, this is some of properties of metals such as good conductors of heat, high melting points, malleable and good conductors of electricity. But for today, uh, I just want to focus on the good conductors of heat. As I mentioned that this tumbler can help to keep my drink warm for a longer period than usual. And also, uh, this stainless steel tumbler is made from variant of metal. Why I say that uh, it's made from variant of metal, not only just from metal, because uh, stainless steel is made uh, from variant of metal because, for your information, uh, stainless steel is made from iron, carbon, uh, and the addition of chromium, nickel, and other alloy. So how this metal tumbler can keep my drink stay warm in a longer period because the electrons in metals actually makes metals as good conductors of heat. The electrons in metal uh, can absorb energy at one spot and then move freely to another spot and it also carry the thermal energy with them. Uh, therefore, uh, if a metal is in, it is in a direct contact with a hot object, it will quickly carry heat away from the object. Uh, furthermore, uh, the particles also in a metal are very close. So, if the particles are very close, the vibration also pass on very quickly. As the, me as the metal is heated, uh, the free electrons close to the heat source also heated. And it will make them move faster and travel through the metal and collide with both atoms and electrons. Uh, thus, the heat also pass quickly through the metal. And because of that, uh, one of the properties is a good conductor of heat. If someone asks uh, why metal is a good conductor of heat compared to plastic, compared to wood, compared to wood because uh, for me it is of, it is because of the presence of conduction electrics. Uh, sorry, because it is because of the presence of conductions of electrons, which are these electrons are able to spread the heat energy around the system. So I think uh, that's that's it from me and thank you. Okay, thank you, Cik. Thank you, Cik Wan uh, Nurhuda. So let's move uh, straight to next presenter who is Ainul. I know we talk about the ceramics. So Ainul, are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's start. Let's reset the clock and then let, uh, let me start first. Set and you can start now. Okay. 
Okay, Assalamualaikum. My name is Hanul. Um, today I'll be talking about ceramic and the main uh, object that I'll be talking about is pottery. So let's start with uh, the definition of ceramic. A ceramic is any of the various hard, brittle, heat resistant and corrosion resistant materials made by shaping and then firing um, and then and then firing and inorganic non-metallic materials such as clay at a very high temperature. So the melting point of ceramic is 2000 degrees Celsius. Ceramic materials have high heat capacity and have both ionic and covalent bonds in them. The ability of a material to absorb heat from its surrounding is its heat capacity. Since ionic bonds are strong and unidirectional, the melting point of ceramic is higher. So I have chose today to talk about pottery because I have a lot of pots and potteries in my house. So it's quite uh, unique. Uh, I'll be talking about the definition first. The definition of pottery is the process and the products of forming vessels and other objects with clay and other ceramic materials which are fired at high temperatures to give them a hard, durable form. Major types include uh, earthenware, stoneware and porcelain. So how pottery is done is it is made by forming a ceramic, often used is clay, body into objects as a desired shape and heating them into a high temperature in a bonfire uh, or cowling and induces reactions that lead to permanent changes including increasing the strength and rigidity of that object. Yeah. Much pottery is purely utilitarian but much can also be regarded as ceramic art. A clay body can be decorated before or after firing. So we have three types of pottery, which is, as I said before, earthenware, stoneware, pors and porcelain. Um, earthenware is clay fired at a relatively low temperatures of between 1000 to 1150 degrees. This results in a hardened but brittle material which is slightly porous. Uh, there are small holes through which liquid or air can go through normally. Therefore, cannot be used to contain water. To remedy this, a glaze is used to cover the object before it is fired uh, for a second time or and rendered waterproof. So the next one I'll be talking about is stoneware. Stoneware is made uh, from a particular clay which is fired at a high temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. This results in a more durable material with a denser stone-like quality. The finished product will be waterproof and unlike earthenware, does not need to be glazed. And then we have porcelain. Porcelain comes from a refined clay which is fired at very high temperature of approximately 1200 to 1450 degrees Celsius. The result is an extremely hard, shiny material, often white and translucent in appearance. The earliest forms of porcelain originated in China around uh, 1600 dynasty, and this association popularized in the term fine fine china or bone china when the porcelain has had ground animal bone added to the clay in order to create an even more durable material. That is quite some history of the porcelain. So uh, to conclude that, the main points of comparison between earthenware, stoneware and porcelain is that uh, will be the temperature at which the clay is fired and the resulting strength, water resistance and durability of the finished products. The quality of the products will be dependent of the quality and purity of the clay that is used to create them. But as a general rule, stoneware and porcelain will be the two more durable forms of ceramic which are commonly used as tableware at home. And the pictures on the left are um, earthenware. The first picture is earthenware. The second one is stoneware. And the third one we have is porcelain. Um, that's it. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Sister Ainol, uh, for the presentation. So let's go now for the next presenter, who is uh, Najmi, who will talk about the polymer. So this is Najmi uh, presentation. So Najmi, you can. Are you ready? Am I audible? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, you can start now. All right, so um, it's early in the morning. I know everyone is so sleepy. So I, will, I want to get interactive with you guys, yeah? So I'm going to ask two questions. If it uh, applies to you, I would like you all to like react with the 
emotes at the bottom of the Zoom screen. So the first question is, how many of you here know how to swim? Or can swim? So we've got hands from Alif Mukhi, Alif Imran, Hadis. All right. Uh, next is, oh, we've got many hands. All right, that's cool. Next is, how many of you here actually take swimming as a competitive sport or take it seriously? Oh, we have Noor Marsha. That's nice to know. Okay, so you might be wondering why I'm talking about swimming and what it has to do with polymers. So if not many people realize that basically in the world of swimming, almost everything we use is made of polymers. So we have like, we have the swimming trunks, we have the swim gear such as uh, the kickboard, the fins and goggles, and then swimming caps which I want to talk about today. So we have uh, three types of swimming caps. We have one that's, that's made of neoprene, we have one that's made of silicone, and one that's made of polyester. So um, we'll start off with polyester. Uh, polyester is the most uh, commonly used, one of the most commonly used swimming caps. Uh -oh, if some of you may not know why we use a swimming cap, it's just to uh, retain our hair so it doesn't clog the the purification machine. So let me go back to polyester. Polyester is one of the most commonly used type of swimming cap because it's uh, durable, it's cheap, and it's one of the most comfortable types of swimming cap. Um, polyester swimming cap is durable. What makes it durable is maybe Dr. Wan will teach us in detail later, but from what I researched and what I read, it's durable because there are mo uh, the molecules are larger in size and they tend to mm, intermingle between each other. So that's, that's what makes it uh, harder for the molecules to individually separate. And then of course it's cheap, it's easy to produce, mass produce for everyone to use. Next we have silicone. Silicone is also durable and it's used for its elastic properties. Why? Um, so that it can, we can be, it can be molded to different types of shapes. Uh, it also has a tight fit. It's one of the most uh, commonly used and choice of professionals. And it has the most, uh, since it's elastic, it has the, well, how do you say this? The properties to be molded into any shape, right? So it has this like anti wrinkle properties where it can be molded to have uh, anti wrinkles obviously and anti wrinkles means it's most effective at reducing drag silicone is also really comfortable usually swimmers would pair polyester caps and silicone caps wearing the polyester one under the silicone cap because the silicone cap has less grip so it doesn't really pull on your hair as much as silicone and then lastly, uh, we have neoprene. Neoprene caps is usually made, used for uh, open water swimming, you know, where there is harsh environments. So of course, since it's open water swimming, this up to events usually will be swimming like what, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers or more. And it would, you'd, you'd be in the water for like around one hour or more, depending on the swimmer. So obviously, if you're in the water for a long duration of time, Obviously, you would want uh, something you need to retain your heat so you don't lose your energy as quickly. So uh, neoprene caps, they have thermal, thermal protection and of course, resistant to harsh environments. Um, another reason we use neoprene and why it's resistant to high uh, harsh environments is because neoprene has this property where it's high tensile and strength. This means that it can resist under tension. So if you pull again on it, it would not tear as easily as as any other material maybe could be used. Um, and for the thermal thermal protection, one reason why it's has this property, I read that it has this material. Neoprene has this material that has this kind of like cellular structure that has that contains nitrogen gas bubbles, which traps heat and acts as an insulator. So yeah, uh, you see, in the world of swimming, everything we use uh, it contains polymers, so that's why I was really interested in presenting you guys this topic.
That's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Najmi. Uh, just before you go, uh, just before we proceed to the next, uh, I just want to know what's the term that you use uh, for this itakre, uh, reducing drag. You you say something about some jargon in swimming. Uh, you you talk something about reducing drag, and then you talk about there are some word that I cannot get. Is it anti wrinkle? Uh, yeah, anti wrinkle. How you spell it? Uh. Uh, y at W R I N K L E W W R huh? I huh? N K L E wrinkle 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 yeah yep could so, it could it oh, is it not wrinkle wrinkle with the L yeah wrinkle oh wrinkle yep. okay 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 so thank you uh Najmi so next we go to the last presenter which is Alif Shami Alif Shami we talk about the composite. So, Alif Shami, are you ready? Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, we can hear you. Let me set the timer again to 5 minutes. So, you ready? Okay, yes. Okay, so you can start uh, talking now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Okay, today I'm going to present about uh, composite material. First of all, Let we know what is the exactly meaning of composite or we also call it as a composition. The meaning is a combination of two or more material uh, with different physical and chemical properties. Okay, uh, without we know, we are this surround by this kind of the material such as the material in making of car, house and composite also involved in the making of sport too. Okay, now I would like to talk about a uh, composite of wood which is called as the plywood. Maybe uh, we already know about this because it is like a common material that we always use in our daily life. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about history of plywood. As you can see there, I put a Mesopotamia picture. It's, it's because Uh, the Mesopotamians uh, came up with the first man-made composite when they made plywood by sticking thin wood stick at different angle. And the first pattern for what we uh, could say as a plywood was introduced into the United States in 1865 to John Kay, the mayor of the New York City at that time. And the name who was invent the plywood is Emmanuel Nobel. Okay, let's go to the specialty of uh, plywood. As you can see there, I say that plywood is strong. Yes, plywood is stronger than a solid wood. Uh, whether you believe or not, uh, whatever he issue uh, regarding to the strength of natural wood, uh, plywood arguably Uh, soft them all and plywood can become even more stronger with the usage of the veneer and plywood unlike the solid wood plywood boasts of uniform strain allows gain regardless of direction and plywood also is more lighter compared to the solid wood it made plywood even more suitable for furniture making okay as you can see there There is a use of a plywood. As we know, the plywood is already widely used, especially in furniture making. Like what I said before, uh, plywood is great for making cabinet carcass for kitchen, bedroom, and more. It is far superior compared to MDF board as it is plus longer. And Uh, plywood is also commonly used to shield roof on as a subfloor on a many internal flooring project. They can act as a very durable and sustainable skin prior to laying a tiles. Certain types of plywood are good for wood paneling or framing interiors to wall. 
as you can see there is uh, a few little bit about fact of playbook if you want to find a hardest playbook we have a marine playbook smoother playbook we have a great a great playbook and most durable playbook is a aircraft playbook and if you search in google uh, you will see three type of playbook uh, first three ply playbook uh, third Three yes. Uh, second is fly. Uh, five fly, five fly, and the third is uh multiply playbook. Yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh Alif Shami. So that is uh, basically what we call the presentation by uh, your what we call your uh, friend. Uh, let me let me write first. Eh? Three ply, uh, five ply, multiply. Ingat senang ke nak tulis sambil dengar? Okay. So common common plywood plywood uh, in install lah. Okay, so it's five minutes. So that's done. Okay, so now I give the opportunity for 1.5% uh, bonus mark. Okay, for 1.5% bonus mark. Uh, for By the way, Cik Wan Huda, Najmi, Alif Shami, and I know please stay. Eh? Please stay on the camera so that I know there are somebody that I can talk to. So for at least for 1.5% uh, bonus mark, uh, bonus mark uh, I open to the floor. Who want to summarize? Who want to summarize everything? Okay, we have this Alif, Khalis, Iwana, Nabila, Cik Wan Huda, Aino, Najmi, and Alif Shami. So, they all talk about the metal polymer, ceramic composite metal, ceramic polymer, and composite. So, I want uh, somebody to uh, summarize. So, if you take this challenge, then you get 1.5 bonus mark. For those presenters, they got 2.5 that we discussed uh, or they agreed before. So, anyone from the floor? Uh, you can summarize in like maybe two or three minutes, uh, whatever you have heard from your friend. Okay, so anyone? Because if you don't take this challenge, I will uh, ask somebody. And when I ask, there are no bonus mark. Okay, anyone? From the floor? Remember, 1.5 is quite big. Eh? 1.5% out of what we call 100% of your total assessment. For example, 2.5% is equivalent to you get perfect score in quiz or assignment. So, 1.5% is big. You may not, you may think this small, but it will make a difference between whether you get A or A minus, B or B minus, C or C minus. So, anyone? So, if no one goes, I would like to volunteer. I'll give chance to everyone else to try first. So I, do like uh, I give chance to the floor first, and then yeah. if no one uh, uh, take it. So anybody who uh, are presenting today can gain next uh, point lah, bonus mark. So anyone, I give uh, thirty second from now. Anyone? Marsha. Marsha. Okay, Marsha. So uh, sorry, Najmi. Marsha is there. Okay, so Marsha, okay, just uh, summarize. Alright, so um, I think the four materials are widely wait, used. Wait for a minute, wait for a minute. I need to put your name, Marsha, so that I know, so that I have record, and then I can put in this my Excel. Marsha, eh? Marsha, one point five percent. But you don't get it yet. After you explain, then you get. Okay, explain, summarize whatever you want to say. Yes, so I think the four materials are, are widely used everywhere. So as an example, um, still uh, widely used in the manufacturing uh, as in workshop and construction. Uh, polymer is used uh, to make jersey. Um, the ceramics are used to make the um, coating car, um, the pots and composites are used in the uh, uh, as in the maglev train and um, uh, as in the maglev train um, and then um, I think the four materials are widely used because they are uh, heat, they are hard and stronger to use 
uh, in for our work. So as an example, um, still I uh, use because it is um, he, uh, it's heavy, hard, and ductile. So um, it can be it can be used um, uh, to do um, everything with one tool. So um, sec sec secondly is um, polymers. Polymers is used um, as Nathan said is in swimming cap because um, it is um, durable, cheap. So um, everyone can um, use it um, to to uh, to um, to um, everything that we, their body uh, body heat. Uh, while swimming, as uh, uh, swimming, and other examples of composites are plywood because it is stronger than solid wood, and so it can um, it can be used much longer than other other woods. So I think that's all. Okay, thank you, Marsha. Uh, so now it's nine. Uh, what we call nine? Uh, let me remove this. Uh, sorry, I don't remove this thing. Uh, let me remove this timer first. Okay, so now it's nine twenty-five. So I give chance for one more person to sort of summarize. But you need to summarize different than Marsha. Okay, so that's the the the, the for you to get this one point five percent. Okay, anyone else? Just summarize again, but don't use what Marsha have said. Use your own uh, thing lah. What uh, left? Because whatever your friend uh, present today, I will use. For example, uh, Najmi use uh, about the cap. I live talk about the plywood. I will use that thing throughout the course and explain further in detail when we, for example, let's say when we go to composite, I will use the Iwana pottery, Ettenware, the clay pot, and when we go to this, uh, what we call, uh, to, uh, let me see here, I also forget, uh, if let's say we, uh, about the metal, I will talk about uh, stainless steel because we remember this Jake Wan Huda tumbler that she loved very much. So now uh, for the last, uh, I will ask one more person who want to get this 1.5 bonus mark again. Summarize like Marsha did, but don't use what Marsha said. I mean, you can use a little bit, but please extend, expand uh, according to what you need. You can also say something about what you think, which one do you like the most uh, among these four, which one do you like the most and why and so on. So this class is, today's class is more uh, about you express yourself. So anyone? From the floor. Uh, can I try? Uh, that is Afnana. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, so let me put first. Huh? Let me, before I forget, because sometimes if we, you are too engrossed doing something, writing, you forget to put the name Afnan Wajdi. Afnan Wajdi, 1.5, not get yet. Huh? After you finish, only then you get. Okay, Afnan, so, all right. continue. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today we have uh, we had eight presenters talking about our uh, four materials. So it is quite interesting uh, that the four materials are uh, are all widely used uh, in our daily life. So the first the first one uh, the two presenters talked about uh, steel, which is uh, widely used. Uh, I think steel is uh, one of the most used uh, materials in our daily life, and. Uh, steel is also one of the most important because uh, if you see around us, uh, the tall building like the uh, Twin Tower in Kuala Lumpur use uh, a lot of steel. So as an engineer, it is uh, important for us to identify the, the correct uh, materials we have to use to, uh, to build a uh, building because uh, it is related to people's safety. So we have to really uh, make our research uh, to, um, uh, to to use the best materials so we can ensure the best safety. So the next material uh, the representative talk about is the ceramic. Ceramic, uh, usually we, we see ceramic uh, used uh, as you want to say in pottery. 
So the special thing about ceramic is that uh, we can mold it uh, and it can take shape uh, and it also can withstand heat. It can withstand uh, a high temperature of heat. So it is quite, quite interesting that uh, a material that can withstand heat can be molded into a various shape so we can make it as a uh, as a pot to cook and we can also make it as a decoration. So the purpose of ceramic, uh, there, there's a lot of purpose of ceramic. So it is quite interesting to see. Uh, the next one is, uh, what is the last presented, I uh, speak about uh, polymer from the second. Uh, polymer from the second. Uh, polymer, uh, widely used as uh, you said uh, it, uh, to you to create uh, swimming materials uh, because uh, it can withstand rain kills. So among all these uh, materials, uh, our main job as engineer is we identify which which one is the best material uh, before we create uh, an object, and then we. Uh, uh, further examine and then we uh, either we improve uh, by by picking the best materials to create the object and then we can uh, produce the best uh, the, we can produce the best product for the customer at the at, at lowest cost possible so I think that's all for me Okay, thank you Afnan uh, Wajdi. So it's already 9.30. So as I promised, it's only one hour. So that's it for today. So any question from the floor? So for next class, I will uh, give feedback uh, on whatever your friend presenting because we have, we have no time today. Um, for next class, I will uh, I will make this Google form later on uh, and I put the name, uh, the name list. Uh, who will open the camera? So those who are, for example, Iwana, for example, those this, uh, eight percent. So you can uh, for the next future class, you will not uh, need to open the camera lah because I will use, I will ask other person lah. So everybody at the end of this course, everybody will open the camera in one class like that. It's more or less like this lah. So, but the name uh, I will not group yet. Uh, yeah. Who is the four person for the next class and for the next next class? So I just randomly pick. Uh, normally I make it balanced. They are sister and brothers, but if there are only sister left, then I put all sisters lah. <coughs> but the name I will put later in Google uh, Sheet and also I will pin in the WhatsApp group. I will inform later. So I think that's it for today. So if there is any question, you can ask me through WhatsApp group. <coughs> so whatever, whatever your friend, uh, what we call uh, mentioned today, will be used for. I can use it for quiz, for assignment. So it's not like uh, this presenter. This presentation is just for the sake of presentation. I will use the data, whatever, uh, whatever they said. And I can mold it as a question later on. So today you learn about what? You learn about uh, the type of material, the four type of material, the metal, polymer, ceramic, composite, and type uh, the, 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 the kind of the specific thing that uh, you learn. Lah. For example, you learn about the alloy, the steel, you learn about the Nike shoes that is polymer, you learn about the superconductor, which is maglev, that is a composite, uh, and then you learn about the uh, other way, earthen way, you learn about uh, clay pot, you learn about the stone way, you learn about porcelain, that's under the, uh, what we call, the, the uh, ceramic, and also you learn about the polymer, like a swimming cap, why people use neoprene, why people use the polyester, why people use silicone, uh, and also the plywood, also uh, we learn also about the composite, uh, the plywood, uh, the, why the plywood is stronger, I will explain later, because uh, in fact, in fact, actually, uh, today, basically, I want to show you something about this plywood and also wood and also the all other stuff. But we don't have time, and I need to, uh, what we call, uh, respect the time. So that's it for today. So any question, I will uh, see you in the WhatsApp group. So that's it. So we end our class today with recitation of Tasbih Kafarah and Suratul As.